All right, good morning. I think we're live. Hey, everyone, thanks for uh, joining us this morning. So um, we're going to talk about uh, our Nepal trip this morning. Uh, it's good to see everyone. I get to see some faces this morning I haven't seen in a long time, so it's good to see you all. And um, let me open us up in prayer, and we'll get started. Father God, we thank you so much for today, Lord, and just the opportunity that Jordan and I and the team had to uh, just minister in Nepal, Lord. I pray, God, that you would just uh, be with us during this time, Lord. I pray that you'd open our hearts and minds to... Uh, mission, Father, and the word that you'd have us to uh, receive here today. And uh, Lord, we just give you all honor and glory in all things. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So, um, again, good morning. So, Jordan, yes. I said we're going to start out early. So, um, I know this is uh, your, it's your second mission trip, but it's your real kind of first mission trip because you were kind of young on the first one, right? Yeah, yeah I don't so, remember. I don't really remember my first one. Yeah. So, um, being a being a first timer, we'll say quote first timer on the mission field. Can you share with us just a little bit about, you know, your thoughts about it? And then as we go through, we want this to be interactive too. So we want y'all to ask questions when we get to slides and things like that. But I wanted Jordan to have an opportunity to at least uh, uh, say a few words in the beginning because you know I talk a lot. So at least I'll give him the platform first. Um, well, first of all, Nepal is just a very beautiful country. Um, so they have really nice people um, but for the first time real mission trip it was really eye-opening for me it was something that I'd never really experienced before because I'd been to Germany but it wasn't for a mission trip it was just for fun so being able to go and fellowship and uh, build relationships with these kids at these orphanages and nutrition centers was something that was that will stick with me probably for rest of my life Jordan uh, you know when they get to choose between playing with me or playing with him he got all the fun stuff for sure so he had everyone from seven to probably 27 wanting to hang out with him so it was a uh, it was good so you know Nepal is about um, it's in between it's a little country in between uh, India and China it's uh, I'll say about 90 8.5% non-Christian. So the 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 main uh, religion there is uh, Hindu, and then after that it's it's Buddhism, and then Christ, Christianity is making a uh, push, but it's uh, probably one to one and a half percent, if even that. Um, somebody asked me, is it dangerous? Um, I mean, you know, any town is dangerous if you're not careful, but I we didn't feel danger at all i didn't did you no 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 there was nothing so just had to kind of be uh careful uh with talking about the gospel from time to time depending on where you're at but uh especially in push potty which we'll talk about uh, a little bit later so uh so some of these uh slides there's kind of two main main verses uh you know the great commission in matthew 28 which is on jordan's uh, uh shirt and then also Acts 1-8, as, as you guys know or heard before, we're kind of an Acts 1-8 church. So I want to talk a little bit about, about missions and uh, before we get into the uh, meat of stuff. But, you know, for me, you, you cannot forsake uh, at-home missions for international missions. Or you cannot forsake international missions for at-home missions. We need to do, but we need to do it all. Uh, we need to do missions work in our own town, in our own neighborhoods. Um, in our own state, our own country, and then, you know, across the, the world. And kind of what comes to mind is, you know, the story of uh, where the shepherd leaves the 99 and goes to fetch the one. You know, it's a, a beautiful story. But when I think about missions sometimes, I kind of think about America being the 99. Uh, relatively safe, you know, to be a, a Christian, even though we need the shepherd. Uh, absolutely uh, need, need the shepherd as well. Sometimes uh, we need to kind of go and uh, look for that one uh, in other countries. But remember, that one doesn't necessarily have to be in Nepal. Doesn't necessarily have to be in, uh, you know, China. Uh, it, can, it can be right across the street from you as well. So um, I see a lot of you wearing the shirts. Everyone has one, and that's, that, that's right. You know, who are we, who are we investing our, our uh, time in? But this particular, there we are, uh, kicking off at DFW. Uh, now, Jordan, I do not want to talk the whole time. I will fill the void, <laughs> okay? okay? Uh, so you're going to have to, huh? 
I don't want him to let me do it, Ronnie. So uh, I wanted to start out. This is uh, the picture on the left. Uh, Jordan, this is, a, this is a typical church service. Won't you tell them about this particular day and what we're, this is our first church service, I think, right? Yeah, it was very hot. And we were very tired. But the room is super small. It's probably as wide as this platform and just that long. So we were all like shoulder to shoulder. And then all the kids and everybody was just sitting on the floor having a great time. Now, I thought going to Nepal and a little south of China was going to be colder than it was. I'm telling you. I don't know. The only time I've been hotter is when I was in a freight car in Jamaica doing church, a metal freight car. Uh, but it was it was pretty warm, let me just tell you. But uh, the folks here, it's a small, uh, small church, but um, uh, you can't kind of hard to tell. I apologize. It's a little better, maybe. Uh, Santosh is on the left uh, of the screen. Uh, he's a pastor in another church. He's a he's a great musician and just a funny, funny guy. Uh, um, and the gentleman in the blue shirt on the right is is Prakash, and he leads the church um, that we were at there on the left. Uh, uh, Santosh was just doing uh, some of the music. We probably had maybe 30 people in there, maybe. It, Oh, it was more than what we have here. Uh, there's probably more than 30 here, but it was probably 30, 40 people in there. Uh, just kind of kind of packed. Uh, you know, Prakash, they all have a story. Uh, all these guys, when you come to the faith, when you when you convert to Christianity in Nepal, um, it, is a, it is a life-changing event. Uh, I don't know how many people that we talk to where they are beaten within an inch of their life by their families. They are ostracized or kicked out. They are... Um, uh, you know, thrown out of their homes, uh, all all these things, right? So it is not an easy road to follow Christ in in Nepal. But uh, these folks are doing it. Uh, you know, Prakash there, his mother's sitting in the seat. Uh, he does IT work, uh, so uh, for different companies. So he is is an educated uh, uh, individual. Education is very uh, very low uh, there. There's, yeah. I mean, there's just not. Yes, Danny. Does, so the question is, does being a Christian affect their ability to get work? Um, at times, yeah, but when you're educated, uh, they're gonna they're gonna latch onto you, you know, regardless of your of your faith. The non-educated, it's it's gonna be difficult because most company uh, businesses are run by Hindu or Buddhist. So if they find out you're a Christian, they 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 may or may not you know employ you. I think the average wage is probably around a dollar a day. Uh, for for these folks, but but I got to tell you though, you know the joy and the peace and the love and the uh, just you know the attitudes are you know amazing. Uh, so it's certainly not based upon you know the money that they have. So, um, but uh, I wanted to point out you know uh, Prakash Ari invited us to his home. He was building a new home. His mother worked I think two or three jobs to make sure he was educated. Uh, she's a, a single mom. Uh, his sister is a works on staff at a church in I think Norway. Norway, yeah, in Norway. So you know she's been able to leave, and so uh, the mom is the mom is not educated, uh, but she has sacrificed her life. So uh, he is he was telling us a story how he's going to provide for her, and it was just kind of a loving, uh, heartwarming moment. You know him just kind of making sure his mom's going to be taken care of was building a house and uh you know has her room now when we see houses it's they're probably i don't know the square foot of this but they go up two or three uh, uh levels um but you know he's one of the fortunate ones there so um so this is uh pastor roy's church he is a filipino living in nepal ministering primarily to Pakistani refugees. So put all that together. Um, there's a lot of Pakistani refugees in, uh, in Nepal. Uh, he's from the Philippines. Great church. Uh, I was able to preach at this church. Um, but um, a, again, a hot box, uh, you know, for sure. And then Jordan, um, I know you had a great time at the orphanages. Why don't you tell a little bit about the picture on the bottom left and that particular orphanage? Um, well, if I remember correctly this was a Hindu based orphanage and brother Roy on the uh, 
the one next to me, um, we were told that he was been trying to reach out to that orphanage and get in there and try to spread the gospel to them, but the people who worked there would kept shutting the gate on them. Well, on one of these trips, the teams brought like 100 to 150 water filters. So he decided to bring those water filters down to the orphanage and use that as a way to get inside, reach, reach them. So he would just, he'd put in the water filters, he'd come back in a couple months and say he needed to uh, ma do maintenance on the water filters and he just kept building a relationship with the people who worked there to the point where they just let him come in and bring teams down there to uh, speak to them. So those of you that help provide water filters, and I know people, you know, the church gave some money and other people gave things. So that is a that is a tool to kind of get into the door. One, they need fresh water. Uh, uh, you know, the water in, in this country is not safe to, to drink. And, um, you know, this was a way for them not only to provide these children with safe drinking water, and then they don't have all the issues that they have you know physically and being sick but it'll also open the door for this pastor to start sharing the gospel with these individuals uh, you can't really uh, there's there's uh, two is there a pointer on this sure there is but uh, bottom right you see uh, there's a lady with her head leaned over there's two girls on the left of her um, I was talking to them and they just asked me they said they said uh, are, are you Christian and I said yes I am and she goes, uh, well, we're not, and I don't think we will be. Uh, you know, just kind of just, you know, out of the mouths of babes, right? And I said, at least she's honest, and because her, you know, her, her parents aren't, uh, or her family is not. But, um, you know, I just pray for those two, all those kids, but those two right there, I mean, they're, at least they're being exposed to the gospel. We'll see, we'll see what, what happens, you know. I may never not know this side of heaven, but... I was able to share the gospel in a short amount of time uh, with uh, they're probably I don't know ten maybe uh, so with uh, ten year olds um, so uh, Pastor Roy's doing a, a wonderful work in that church um, it's a amazing little community they everywhere we went they fed us um, tell them about the food Jordan <laughs> well their staple food their national food is a thing called dalbot, which is basically steamed rice, lentil soup, and then mostly chicken, but sometimes vegetables. Chicken that, bone. Chicken, yeah, chicken bones with a little bit of meat around the edges. But they eat this food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and the only, only difference they get is maybe they have an egg in breakfast. But there's, it's such a staple food in Nepal that tourist shops had shirts that said dalbot power 24 hour. <laughs> and these kids they're 10 years old uh, the amount the, you know the portion because they're probably going to especially the orphans they don't they're not eating a lot but um, the amount of food that's piled on the plate I don't know how anyone could eat it it's just so much it's I mean it's rice and it's lentils it costs about you know depending on where we're at we kind of rounded it up 40 50 cents a meal uh, for these for these kids, so it's uh, it's relatively inexpensive, but um, they go through a lot of rice. Uh, let me tell you. All right, um, I know I'm cramming a lot of photos in here, but uh, there's a picture of the food. That plate is pretty normal. It's got a couple pieces of chicken on it. Um, I mean, we ate it. Uh, we were we were fed there, and um, it actually wasn't that bad. It was really good. I mean, it's like I didn't want to eat rice every day, but it was it wasn't wasn't bad. Um, this couple here at the bottom middle, they were cooks in one of the uh, 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 nutrition centers, and he's holding a water filter. So it was hard for us to go out and do water filters just because um, we didn't realize when we took them, it's like three hours out and three hours back. So that was almost a whole day that we would go to take one because they were, they were in the outskirts of the town. So we, we opted to leave the water filters with the pastors and uh, put it to the best use when they make their trips out, um, you know, which is which is fine. The whole idea was to make sure the filters get to people and, and they'll make sure it gets there. But this couple here, their, um, their filter had just broken, so we were able to give them, uh, you know, a couple to uh, uh, keep. Uh, Jordan is teaching his 
first lesson up there in Upper Right. He did an awesome job. Uh, tell them what you taught on. You don't have to go the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Well, I hate um, just saying Jordan speak. Because that is what I feel like I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I did a story on basically superheroes and how God is our superhero. Um, I try to be as interactive as I can. Kids seem to like that. Um, so this was this was actually the second time I taught because this was the last day we were in Nepal. Um, some a lot of the people there on the team said it was my better out of the two of teaching. Um, I can kind of agree on that now. I was probably less nervous and more prepared. He did great both times, but he did. You know, J- Jimmy. You know, first sermons, right? You prepare for thirty minutes and you teach seven. Yeah. That's how it works. But, no, I had a lot of fun teaching, actually. I didn't think I would, but looking back on it, it was, I really enjoyed it. So, um, this is Narajan. Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, Jordan, correctly if I'm wrong, but uh, he gave up uh, pursuit of becoming a surgeon or a doctor to work in this home. Um, was it him or Solomon? I thought it was him. Anyway, um, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure it's it's Narajan, but uh, so he gave up, you know, a profession of becoming a doctor, and he wanted to work in this home. And there's that's a uh, uh, there's tons of kids packed into this in this particular home, and they're just doing, you know, they're just loving on kids and telling them about Jesus, and you know, helping them with homework and uh, being dads because dads are gone or moms if needed, and uh, his uh, his wife is. You know, just got has a tremendous heart uh, for these kids, and um, you know, it's a it's a work. It's I mean, it, it's hard hard work. And these guys, I want to tell you about each one of these folks because one of the last slides, I'm going to actually pray for them, and I'll have all their pictures up. But you know, the work is hard. It's you know, we get to come, we go for a week or ten days, and we come home. Uh, but you know, these guys are still there every day. You know, with these with these kids. And uh, it's just it's just amazing. So, um, and kids are kids everywhere. They just like to play. Um, you know, here we are sitting around a board game. Um, kids are running in the courtyard. There was a video of it, but we're not going to be able to play it because it won't play. But um, we just found out that kids are kids anywhere around the world. They just want to be loved on. They just want to be, um, you know, in a safe environment and be able to grow up. And uh, so your your contributions to us going hopefully you know was able to bring a little bit of uh you know uh levity or lightheartedness or just you know love uh you know to some of these kids and um a couple of them are would just say why are you here why would you why would you come all the way over here god loves you so just amazing um all right let me uh, uh before i get into this any any burning questions that you think we can answer real quick? Yes, Danny. Well, that board game right there, I need to find one because it was actually really, really fun. I didn't really understand it, but it was a kind of a kind of like a backgammon checkers type thing. It was fun. Um, superheroes translated, which he was really nervous about. Yeah, that. I was nervous about it the, before the first time, but when we in Pokhara, we were at an orphanage, and a day before my um, teaching, a lot of the kids they came to me and was asking me my favorite superhero, and we were talking about that, and I was like, okay, this will be good. I'll know, they'll know what I'm talking about. So American football and baseball does not resonate there. Of course, soccer or football for them will. Uh, badminton, volleyball is big in Nepal, um, but they just, uh, actually Santos would ask me about American football, so he was interested, but he just couldn't figure it out, so, um, no, I mean, they had, do what? Oh, okay, yeah, Melinda can't either. Um, yeah, I mean, some of that, and, you know, um, you know, some of their games are still the same, like, there's a video of them tying balloons on their ankles and running around popping them, that's probably an Iwana game or something. Uh, or if not, it should be. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, kids just like to have fun. They're just a bunch of, a couple of you will get this, yuck monkeys run, running around. Uh, some of you won't get that reference, but uh, they're they're just awesome, awesome kids. All right, so this is kind of the, uh, uh, 
this this was a hard day. Um, so it's a place called Pushpati. Um, this is a uh, Hindu temple. There was thousands upon thousands of people there. Um, what they're doing here, and not to get too graphic, but those are bodies burning on those pyres. So the bodies burn 24 hours. They believe if you die within 24 hours, you need to burn, be burnt at this temple. Your ashes pushed into the river, and then as you float downstream, hopefully you'll, you'll become something better in the next life. So that's their hope. This is, this is their hope that they will live a life good enough to become something better than what they are. And those things burn 24 hours. There's smoke uh, that's there. Those men in the, or boys, those are temple boys in the water that are in there uh, harvesting the gold that comes from the body um, to put back in the temple coffers. Uh, here, um, yes, there are lepers. And we you know, it was, how did that, uh, how did that was, open your eyes? It was like going back in time and walking through the streets of the Bible. Like, they were, they were wrapped up, they were missing limbs and digits and stuff, and it was just, it was a pretty intense moment. But, you know, Craig likes to take teams here to show, you know, why we do what we do. And... You know, in a sea of thousands upon thousands of people that are dying every day, um, and they they have no hope of, of heaven without Christ, and we know that. But, you know, the one, you know, the little child that I was talking about earlier that was exposed to the gospel, maybe they will accept Christ. And yes, they're going to have a hard life, uh, but their hope is based on something more than your ashes floating down, you know, the river. And there's a lot of symbolism in Hinduism that is really just, um, that's kind of this, those are serpents and dragons and things on that. That's some god that somebody has made a sacrifice to. I don't know which one it is. But uh, there's just a lot of evil symbolism in their religion, which is, uh, it's hard. I mean, you know, where do you, you know, serpents and dragons and... Uh, you know, fatted calves and pigs, and I mean, they don't they don't really bring uh, joy to most people. <laughs> if you're a snake person, you know, we can't be friends. So, uh, so anyway, this is, um, and it was really uh, because you know people are doing TikTok videos there, uh, selfies. They're all dressed up, taking like look like senior pictures or something going on there. It was it was just the craziest atmosphere to be around with all this death going on and hopelessness but yet they were doing TikTok videos yes Melinda yeah so so the body is buried in their, their finest uh, whatever they have right finest clothes um, you know finest jewelry uh, whatever it is so um, it's you know, like the money changers in the old temple, right? They're in there. You know, the church is gathering back up, you know, those possessions to go back in the church coffers to help fund this place. Uh, it doesn't go back to the family. So the family, it burns. The family gathers, and they have death rooms there. Uh, I hate to get everyone down in, in early in the morning, but uh, you can pay to have a death room. So you're there on site, and that's what people, you know, want to do. But... Again, if you make a dollar a day and your only hope is to float down this river and become something better, you don't have enough money to even get here. So your hope is based on something that is even unachievable because they don't have the money to pay for the death room, right? So, or the cost of you know the burning or all that kind of stuff. There's another picture that I have that I put in here is just stacks and stacks of wood. Um, you know that 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 facilitates it. So, this was kind of a this was kind of a depressing day, you know, for sure. Um, but any questions on this one? Now, yeah, it's um, uh, I wouldn't even begin to guess, but it's um, yeah, a thousand. Yeah, uh, the birthplace of Hinduism. Some say is in Nepal, 
or in that area. Um, so yeah, it's been around a long time. And it's been added on. This is a huge complex. Huge. And there's thousands of people in line that get bussed in to be marked at this temple. I mean, from all over. They probably spend a life savings to just go once. Uh, but that's why we do what we do. Yes. Uh, you're, this is like the pinnacle of the place but you're burned somewhere else you're in a I don't know stagnant lake or a you know a small stream or, or whatever the case is and there's a lot of sacrifice that goes on here um, you know some people will sacrifice uh, food or rice or milk or you know used to I'm sure it was human sacrifice or, I mean I don't know but I'm, I'm thinking or at least animals you know at some point animals for sure so, but not as much as that anymore. But it's this crazy place, for sure. You know, Craig talked to us about, Craig's our, he's our manna missionary, which he'll be here in a couple weeks, I think two or three weeks, him and his family, uh, hopefully his family will be here. Um, he was saying, he had made an observation, he said, you know, even the dogs don't act right here. And what he means by the animals don't, he says, because this has been so, country is so devoid of God so for so many generations that even the animals don't know how to act correctly. I mean, these uh, dogs are, I mean, they're not acting like dogs. They're just, it's hard to explain. Uh, the dogs will leave the comfort and the safety of a side road and come lay down in the middle of a busy road and go to the bathroom or fall asleep. And, the, it, yeah, they're just at the mercy of the drivers. He said cows are eating out of trash piles. Um, he said the animals just don't act right here. So he just, he was, his observation is it's just been so devoid of God that even the animals don't know what to do. So it was interesting, uh, interesting take. Um, okay, to be a little more lighthearted, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful scenery. Uh, top right is Mount Everest. So um, that is, was, you know, amazing to be at least as close as we were. Uh, bottom right is uh, the Annapura Mountain Range in Pokhara. Uh, what's that called again? The, uh, the fishtail. The fishtail. It's a, it's a holy mountain. They don't let people climb on that. And I think four or six of the highest mountains in the world are around in this area where people go climb. So, um, no, no. Uh, we tried. Yeah, we. Well, we I actually wish. we actually tried to get a helicopter ride to base camp, but they they were closed. Base camp was closed. So uh, maybe next time. Um, that's, you know, uh, the bottom left is top of one of the orphanages, and it's just, I mean, it's beautiful scene. You see the KFC in the top left uh, there. That's out of our hotel window, and uh, uh, there is some modern stuff. KFC changed their recipe so it would be spicier there, just so you know. Uh, they did change their, their recipe for that. Yeah, Danny, you'd like it. It's actually pretty good. We ate at KFC really one good. time. No, no, no Chick-fil-A. But just uh, beautiful, beautiful scenery. Um, it's just, you know, God's glory is just, you know, amazing. What did you think about the, the landscapes that you were able to see? Well, um, breathtaking is one word I can use. Um, Definitely, yeah. Texas Nothing doesn't like have that. mountains, but I would agree. <laughs> they actually don't call them mountains. They're just hills. That's what they call. It. They're, these are our hills. So they're, but they're they're mountains for us. Um, that is, uh, we we're paragliding. So I did have a video that you'd have seen, but it's not going to play. But uh, that was. Yeah, you're. So basically, you're about from here, and then right over there is the drop off of the cliff. And he's like, "All right, I need you to start walking." And you just walk, and you walk, <laughs> and then you run, and then you run, and then you're not running anymore. <laughs> and you're just in the air. And. Those are the five brave folks who decided to go. Uh, 
Denny, the older gentleman there on the right, he's what, 70? 70, 74. 74. So it was, uh, it was good. It was, uh, uh, I mean, I have to admit that once I, we finished the death spirals and all that, and it was like, uh, whoo, I was getting a little lightheaded. I said, you, you can take me down now. Uh, I think he'd have stayed up there all day. Yeah. It was um, but it was, uh, um, do you know how far we were up? So my guy told me that we were about 1,900 meters in the air, which was about 6,200 feet. But we went into the clouds, and all we could see was just white. The clouds were surrounding us, and he'd bring us down, and we'd go back up again. It's, uh, I mean, just a thrill, uh, thrill of, of a lifetime to do that. So it was great. Um, uh, here's just some of the, uh, uh, we did a lot of serving of food. There's doll bought up on the right. You know, playing games, and uh, um, they we were giving gifts to some of the kids in the bottom left. Uh, they were giving us gifts. So uh, they say uh, Namaste, uh, but Namaste is uh, I see the God in you. So it may not be the one true God, but I see the God in you. But Christians say Jimashe. Yeah, Jim, Jim So when they do it, they'll say Jim And that means victory in Jesus. Roughly. That's hopefully someone in Nepal is not saying, oh my gosh, he's an idiot. <laughs> but that's kind of what I, what I got out of that. So a lot of people, when they greeted you, it would be namaste. Now that she's saying Jim you know, you know, to me as she gives uh, the little shawl thing. Um, but uh, I never knew that. You know, I, I thought... Uh, I've been to India, I don't know how many times, and have said Namaste several times, not really knowing what it was. But that means I see the God, I recognize the God in you. Whichever, whichever one. And there, when we say God, they, were, they, were, they would tell us, um, you know, when you talk about God, you know, talk about the one true God, just not God. Because they believe in God. So, yeah, thousands of them. God for everything. Not the one true God. Um, there's a little uh, object lesson rope trick that, that I did on the middle bottom middle. Uh, they were all wanting to know how it was done, so it was it's kind of kind of interesting. And I did share because I don't want them uh, since it's a uh, I didn't want them to think anything about magic. The kids about magic. This is not a magic magical thing, right? This is here's how you do it. This is how. But here's the object lesson. So. Uh, I was able to share it, so it was fun. And even the the folks, you see, uh, Jordan is pretty intent there. He's well, trying to figure it out. I was mostly watching the faces of everyone because you'd already shown me in the hotel room how to do it. So I was watching everyone's <laughs> faces and how astonished they were whenever they were seeing how it was being done. Yep. Uh, so it was, uh, in fact, Santos on the bottom left, he sent me a, a, a note this week and said, hey, I need you to tell me how to do that so I can use it with the kids. So that was awesome. Um so, uh, so there's our missionaries, you know, Craig and, and Jennifer. I just want to make sure and pop them up there. They were there the whole summer. Uh, he took this picture of this gentleman. This was at Push Potty. He was selling these things. I just thought it was a cool picture, so I uh, uh, included it. Uh, we had devotions every morning, um, talk about our day, and each each person would share. A, that's not yours, right, Jordan? That's Denny's. No, that's Denny's. Yeah, but um, you know, I never, I never did my. Lucky. Well, lucky. <laughs> no. Uh, something happened, and I couldn't do mine for some reason. But uh, all right. Um, so this gentleman here is selling uh, fruit just, uh, you know, to make uh, ends meet. But I just thought that was a pretty awesome uh, looking picture. It's uh, some parts of Nepal are modern, and some are probably the same as was hundreds of years ago. Uh, the western part of Nepal is uh, still pretty desolate. That means it's, uh, you know, villages that are not a lot of roads you can get to. Um, you know, white European or Americans really can't go there because, you know, we wouldn't be able to survive and we wouldn't be accepted. So their whole strategy is to, or, uh, this one gentleman I'm going to show here in a minute, is he's taking orphans from the western part of Nepal, bringing them into his place in Pokhara, raising them up and teaching them, educating them, and uh, telling them about Christ in the hopes that they will go back to their home and that they become the missionaries. 
And I mean, that's the cool thing, right? Is, you know, they're training up their own people to be missionaries in their own country. And that's probably a lesson that we should learn, Danny. That's probably one of the things that we should learn as well. So um, that, that's Jude and Sarah, their kids. So there's pizza, actually really good pizza uh, in Nepal. So uh, those are uh, cinnamon roll pancakes. So we did eat more than just Dalbot. Yeah, we ate a lot. Yeah, we ate a lot. Oh, Those wow. are bananas growing up there on the tree, which is pretty cool. And, Jimmy, that is the local uh, Starbucks-like coffee place. So, I mean, that is a pretty nice-looking shop. This was in Kathmandu, which is capital city. Um, really, really good coffee, and um, they just took forever. <laughs> they, they didn't hurry. That's right. Time is Time is relevant. And then a uh, good-looking picture of Jordan there as he arrived in Pokhara. I think it was Pokhara. So. Yeah. Um, all right. Any any questions, I'll stop here. Yes. Uh, personally did not see any uh, persecution but uh, multiple multiple stories so you have to remember they're going to protect us as missionaries we're in the more westernized part of the country um, so you know Kathmandu's capital city a lot of commerce and business going on a, a lot of white people walking around just because you got to remember there people are climbing mountains people are doing a lot of uh, backpacking so a lot of European people are there so they're kind of used to seeing what's going on. Now, uh, I might have something may have happened if I'd have just stood on the street corner and talked about Christ openly with a megaphone. Uh, but uh, you, know, you have to be respectful too. You have to be respectful to to where you're at, the culture that you're in. Um, uh, pers my personal philosophy is to kind of walk alongside the local churches because I I'm there and gone. Right, so whatever the church is doing is what I want to do, and I don't want to hinder anything that's going on. But um, uh, Steve Shermer, uh, Silk Road Catalyst guy, and he's one of our missionaries to Afghanistan and Pakistan and things like that. Or he he runs a a group of people. One of his directors lives in Kathmandu, so I met with him. He was a son of a Buddhist monk that came to Christianity 30 years ago. Uh, his dad told his brother. You can kill him or you can beat him to an inch of his life. With whichever one you want to do is fine. Brother and friend showed up at his apartment in Kathmandu and about killed him. Told him not to come home. So they they spared his life, but he's been walking with the Lord ever since. You know, he was he's probably my age. Uh, so um, saved in his twenties. But persecution's real. Now he has since reconciled with his with his brother. Dad has passed on, and uh, you know, uh, I guess Christianity is a little bit more acceptable than maybe it was 30 years ago uh, there. But uh, lots of persecution like that. Everyone's got a story there uh, about losing a job or losing family or you know, parents kicking them out of the house or spouses leaving them or you know, it it cost it cost to follow Christ there. Any other questions?
That's right. Listen, we could come home and we could say we presented the gospel to these people and we had 30 people accept Christ, and that would be awesome. But I guarantee you that most of those folks, when you're handing them a plate of food when they're hungry, they're going to accept whatever you're offering them to get that plate of food. And I don't want anyone to accept Jesus for a plate of food because, you know, you want it to stick, right? Or for, you know... A uh, home in Africa. You know, we talked about the homes that are being built. You never want that. Uh, so you want it. You want long term, and you just want uh, some reason for the church to get back to uh, that particular home, whether it's a water filter or a village or whatever the case is. Now, I won't shy away from it. If someone asks and they want to accept Christ right then and there, yeah, and then we'll 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 go through that process. But that's not weird to say. It's not the primary goal. Yes. That's right. Absolutely. All right, I better pick it up, as Jimmy says. Maybe. There we go. Um, this is a school. Uh, this is this is a uh, 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 Bernard. Uh, he he runs this school. This is a um, it's probably 300 kids, uh, but it's um, in the slums of of uh, Pokhara near the airport uh, but I mean, this school is academics they're you know winning awards I think they won the spelling bee or something when we were there one of the kids did um, you know the, the city spelling bee athletics they're 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 high on the chart so he's doing a, a very very good work <clears throat> but he takes about 25 of these kids back to an orphanage that don't have now when we say orphans sometimes they've lost their parents Sometimes their parents have left them. And it's, it's a weird culture because there's no education. And when an individual has a person to go be, become educated, they go to school and they leave their kids, which is totally against anything that we would even think about. And so that's part of the issue that Craig is having with some of these folks is, listen, you can't leave your children for someone else to take care of. You need to take your kids with you. You know, uh, to be that 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 Christian father, because they are Christians that are leaving, sometimes, and it's it's still kind of foreign to us. But they do a great work there. Jordan caught a chicken, chicken <laughs> got out. So Sarah, uh, so at this particular school, he he they have a water well which he sells water to the community to make money to run the orphanage. They they have uh, is it hydroponic farming? Where they yeah hydro it's either hydro or aquaponic but I yeah, think it's hydro hydro one of those two so this that this guy you know Benod is very smart guy but he's doing all these things to help run the orphanage in the school and help pay for things so uh, and it's good to point out because sometimes as Westerners we think all they want is an American dollar and they're not working these guys are working hard and they're doing a lot of things. They're stretching your dollars farther than you can stretch your own dollar. I can tell you that. Um, they got a lot going on, but, but she let the chicken out, and Jordan had to chase it. But he caught it. It was good. Uh, down here on the right, we were able to provide uh, these um, uh, power washers. So there's a – it's just kind of a dirty place. But it's always been a dirty place, so no one is really concerned about personal hygiene. Um, so we're trying to teach them. So and it's wet there all the time. So there's there's mold and there's you know dampness going on at the school. So we said, 
let's buy this. So we pressure washed, washed the whole, pretty much the whole bottom area, and cleaned it all up. And then their their bathrooms. Bathrooms are just squatties. If you've never been to a third world country, it's they don't have toilet seats. You know, it's just a hole in the ground with two pieces of porcelain where you just set your feet and you anchor in and you just go. Now, not us because we were in a hotel, but uh, but I have unfortunately used those before. Um, but we, we tell them it's just concrete and porcelain. Go in there and wash that thing down. And they and they just they're it's we're trying to train them to think differently, um, or the missionaries there are, and also they're able to use this to go fund other work. Somebody may pay them in a business to come and actually clean the front of their sidewalks because they do it by hand. They just don't they don't have the funds to have something like this. So we're able to provide this to them. So that'll go a long way. It'll clean their home. It'll they'll be able to make some money. And I have no doubt that they'll turn that into a revenue source for their uh, for their home because everything else they turn into a revenue source so uh, which is which is really good they have an entrepreneurial spirit they just need to, a little kickstart to get it going so um, and so that was that was that was pretty neat um, I can tell you though that it took us about a half a day to get that because people didn't understand why we wanted to buy one of those if we didn't have a car wash, like a commercial car wash and washing buses and stuff. So no, we're gonna use it in a home. No, you don't want that, you, you want this. No, we don't want this little electric thing. We want we want the monster, you know, so that's why we got that one, so it was fun. Uh, the big group we took up, uh, uh, these are some, uh, they don't really call them orphanages there, they call them children's homes, but this is the children's home that we, uh, we were able to take out for dinner and a whole outing for them to, uh, do some things. It was really, really fun um, uh, time. Uh, Ashmita up there on the right, she just stole my heart. Uh, if I wish I could bring her home, um, she just, it took me like five days for her to have anything to do with me, but she finally did. So, uh, Jordan, you had, I know you had a few relationships with some, some young boys. You want to share that if um, you can? Um, yeah. So, there was three boys. Their names were uh, Jenish, Samuel, and Siraj. The first day we were in Pokhara, they kind of came over to me and they were talking to me and um, they saw my tattoo and they lifted up my shirt and they were saying, ooh, angels, angels. And they'd poke on it and they'd say, beautiful, beautiful. So every day they would look at my tattoo and just go, beautiful, beautiful. But those three kids basically were just my shadow for the whole time we were in Pokhara. We, um, they sat next to me when we ate lunch. Um, they pulled me to go up to the mountain whenever we did the. Uh, when we went up the mountain on the cable car, they're like, "Okay, Jordan, you're doing the, uh, you're doing the bike. You're gonna bike ride up on a cable on a bike across the mountain." So, I just basically followed whatever they wanted me to do and just hung out with them the whole time I was there. And I'll tell, you, come on in. It's fine. And I'll tell you, um, the impact that Jordan had on those young boys will last a lifetime for them. So. Um, all right, I know we're out of time, and I'm sorry. We're at the pretty much the end. This family here, Benod's family, one of the most amazing families I've ever come in contact with as far as in, in Christian work. Um, they are, uh, one is going to become an eye doctor, one is going to become a dentist, uh, one is uh, accepted to a chef school, and the other one is a teacher in that school that I showed you earlier, which she's going to take over. Um, I don't have a lot of time to, uh, unfortunately, I'm running out of time, but, um, uh, you know, pray for these. This, they're, they're doing amazing, amazing work. Uh, it's just, you know, the, their sacrifice that they have is amazing. So um, there's the team on the bottom left, uh, Pastor Bob, Jordan, myself, Mary, Dawn, and Denny. And um, I think that was right after we had the most amazing Belgian waffle dessert. But uh, anyway. All right, uh, pray for these folks. Uh, our missionaries, Craig and uh, Jennifer, uh, the Benod family, Pastor Roy, Narajan, Santosh, and Prakash in the yellow jacket. These guys are on the front lines every day doing a work, and their families are involved, and they're, they're making a difference and, um, in, in a country that is you know, probably 1% Christian. Uh, so they are in the minority. So if you would, just say a quick prayer for them. And uh, we'll see uh, Craig and Jennifer here in a few weeks. And if you have any other questions, you can ask them when they're 
uh, here with us. So anything before we go? I know I'm, I'm in, I'm in Jimmy's time now. Um, any other questions before we go? Yeah, I just, yeah, I was just doing that. All right, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity that you gave Jordan and I. Uh, Lord, I thank you for this church uh, and its sending capacity. Lord, I just pray for uh, each of these individuals in country. Lord, I pray, God, that you give them safety and protection and wisdom. Uh, Father, I pray that you meet their needs, their physical, uh, emotional, relational, spiritual needs, Lord. And Father, as a, as a Western Christian, Lord, I pray, God, that we would... Um, uh, just open up our, our hearts and our minds and our uh, eyes and our ears to where you'd have us serve. And Father, it doesn't have to be halfway around the world. I just pray that uh, we would be obedient in whatever you ask us to do. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much.